Before venturing out into the everyday world of Milan, Italy, I thought that um, Americans might like a quick look at a, mm, I guess a typical European hotel room. They do vary a lot, but um, probably the biggest area where we'll, we'll find some objects of interest would be in the bathrooms, which tend to be kind of spacious in comparison to the rest of the hotel room, which will be kind of cramped, but down there you might be seeing what appear to be two toilets, but one of them actually is meant for, I guess, other stuff. And this is the second room where we've seen one of those on this trip alone. And then they've got these special little towels next to it, which I don't even want to know what's going on with that. Or for that matter, what's going on with these little plastic bags that are sitting here right next to everything with the brand name of Fumagalli on the little dispenser there. And <clears throat> here we've got a string connected to a thing up there. And you might be wondering, of course, what is that? And you're kind of pulling on the string, trying to figure out what it is. In this case, it is labeled. And what it says on there, if you get close to it, it says alarm. So some of them aren't even labeled, but I've seen these in all hotel bathrooms in Italy. That seems to be the case is that they believe that people will fall in the bath in the shower and so they have that string there you can pull on that i don't even know what you would do with that other than it's got a little switch and it appears to switch between 230 volts and 120 volts a little switch over here too i think that's a plug of some kind and then who knows what that is meant to indicate but these this is a typical european plug i forget what those are called but it's one of those things you plug an adapter in too if you're an american guy like me so let's go out and get a look try to get a look at something that's kind of obscure surely it is but interesting in terms of its placement and just how it exists in this world of milan it took me about 15 minutes to try to turn off all the lights in the room. There must be 25 different uh, light switches scattered all over the place. So <laughs> it's all part of the fun of a European hotel room. And uh, now we're just kind of walking over to a train station and noticing a few things in this residential neighborhood where I like to stay personally. It's just in a kind of a side neighborhood rather than where everybody else, all the tourists will be. This is the real stuff, and you can see on that building behind me all kinds of shiny brown tile. They actually took the time that it would take to do all that tile work on the outside of a building. And then right across the street, something that uh, you'll probably only see right here in this very neighborhood. Very unique to this spot and uh, just sort of reminding myself that I would never see that again. Oh, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> One thing about Italian trains is they really slam on those brakes. When they're going to stop, they stop. Um, so I'm a little glad I'm in a spot where I'm not in a big crowd at the moment because one of the things that Americans may find most challenging on an everyday basis in Europe is actually walking. Yes, you heard right. Just walking in crowds. Very, very challenging in Europe because for some reason, Europeans seem to, um, if they're going from point A to point B, they go in a perfectly straight line and they do not vary their speed and they do not vary their course. So as an American, I'm a little used to this concept of like, I'm aware of where other people are, where they're going. I try to at least anticipate where they're going. And so I think other Americans do that too. And as a result, we just sort of all have in our heads what other people are doing, where they're going, and where I'm going. And so we, we have the ability to kind of slow down, speed up, maybe take a little bit of a curve, a curved path, 
to sort of accommodate all of those around us and then all of those around us trying to do the same. And so that's the kind of what I'm accustomed to in any crowd in the culture that I come from. And in Europe, it just does not work that way. People go where they are going. Now we're waiting for the train here. And this is just a kind of standard everyday kind of neighborhood kind of train station. Nothing special, nothing touristy. You can see in the background maybe a lot of laundry hanging from that apartment building back there. And uh, we are going to make our way via two different trains. To a place where we can see this very um, out of the way unnoticed, obscure, you might say, piece of artwork down in a train station. We've reached our final destination here for the video, and that is going to be found right at the top of the escalator over there. So this is random old underground station, you might call it a subway station. And the top of this escalator right here, I already made one pass, so I know what it looks like. We'll try to get you a good look too, but this is a piece of art that was installed in a very strange place. It just goes unnoticed. People who notice might wonder, what's that doing there? <laughs> So it's kind of like the guts of Milan, all of the uh, tubing, cabling, etc., peeking out above a random escalator, and that is known as the electric jungle. So I hope you got a good enough look at it. Maybe we'll take one more run. I'm trying with my phone here. That may give us a little bit better view of this brown on brown piece of artwork that we are approaching right now. So that was a second look at um, something that's just there for anybody to see. Anybody who cares?